What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denaric Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Geography Now Marshall Islands this time. Uh, so th these islands, I'm assuming, belong to some Marshall back in the days. <laughs> That's why they're called the Marshall Islands. Or maybe some, some uh, explorer named uh, George Marshall, let's just say, uh, found, the, found the islands first. Who knows? But uh, Paul will explain where the name came from. Anyway, Paul, <laughs> shameless self-promotion, Paul. Oh, wow. Well, it's well, what is channel, that? We have so. Geography Now t-shirts? Yeah, you can get them at geographynow.com. How many are, how much are Guys, they? Guys, the only way we can open up this episode is with a fair use safe parody song. Oh, who lives in a radioactive atoll? Invertebrates! <laughs> and possibly cause a big monster to grow. I asked for Godzilla. Godzilla! But seriously, this place has some cool stuff. Like no, no copyright Like law. dancing Come visit uh, if you think that it is crabs. a Marshall Islands! Marshall Islands, little controversial, but still... This is where they tested nukes. Pandering much? You bet. Hi, Gen Z. Okay, so anyway, uh, for those who don't know the backstory of SpongeBob, uh, Bikini Bikini Bottom was actually uh, close to a Bikini Atoll where there was a bunch of nuclear tests going on there. Uh, the radio it caused the uh, the animals to become radioactive and uh, you know blah blah blah, changed their genetic makeup and they created uh, what we see in uh, Bikini Atoll. I know, it's absolutely silly, but still, it's fun to think about. It's also one of my favorite cartoons of all time. Maybe even famous, uh, most favorite shows of all time. Spongebob. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs, and we are back in Oceania! Woohoo! The one thing most people know about this place is the Bikini Atoll, where Godzilla was basically born. No, but seriously, apart yeah. from that, this country actually has quite a unique history of seafaring culture that goes thousands of years in the past, and it lives on today. Where are the Marshalls? Well, let's find out. <laughs> Have they compensated they the Marshalls for nuking them? John Marshall in 1788, the Marshall Islands are known locally as Jolet Gen Anic, or the gifts whoa, whoa, whoa. from God. I, I and wasn't they've been kind of like oasis known locally John as Jolet Gen Anic, or the gifts from God. And they've been kind of like what did oasis I say? James in the desert Jar of water. Marshall? First of all, the Marshall Islands lie in the Pacific Ocean, part of the larger island regional group known as Micronesia, with a maritime boundary with other states such as Kiribati, Nauru, and the Federated States of Micronesia. The country is made up of 29 coral atolls, comprised of over 1,100 smaller islands and islets, as well as five solid isolated islands, Jemo, Kili, Jabot, Lib, and Mejit. The country is divided into 24 municipalities, corresponding to the 24 inhabited atolls and islands, including the capital Majuro, which holds about half of the entire population in the it. Majority. The capital Majuro, the next Get largest Majuro, town, will be majority. Ebeye on the Kwajalein Atoll, the one with the most land area at a whopping six square miles, Dude. and Arno on the Arno Atoll. Just call the Chinese, the they'll Kwajalein build some Atoll more. has limited access, usually only to Marshallese citizens and U.S. military personnel, as well as a few authorized contractors and journalists. The country has about 30 airports and airstrips amongst the atolls so that people can get their supplies faster. The largest and main international one being Majuro's Marshall Islands, or Amata Kapua International. Finally, there is a somewhat kind of ongoing territorial dispute with the ownership of Wake Island that is currently administered by the U.S. Now, if you watch the Cured Bus episode, you'll know exactly what living on land here is like. Ken, ugh, you take this one. Why? Because, you know, you kind of already did the Cured Bus and Madagascar episode, so I think I'm just going to kind of like, you know, designate you as the island explainer guy from now on. Wait, is this, this a promotion? Yeah, promoted. <laughs> yeah, it's a promotion of the Marshall Islands to all those curious minds out there. Ah, I got him. <laughs> The majority of the land are made up of atolls, which are basically ring-shaped islands that are edges of unbreached underwater volcanoes. That said, there were eight edges. <laughs> of them. This means that the people have to deal with life in extremely narrow land corridors that could only sometimes be a few meters wide. The main airport runway was literally built to be wider than the actual coral sand bank it sits on. Most people travel to other atolls either by charter boat or a small plane. Fortunately, the atolls are not too far from each other. On average, about 15 to 50 miles, so day trips are not uncommon. Thank you, Ken. That was pleasantly adequate. Now here's the interesting thing. As a former US territory, the Marshall Islands has been a sovereign state since 1986. However, they are still kind of deeply intertwined with US affiliation on the administration level. Today they have a compact free association agreement, which means something like this. Okay, look USA, we think we can handle things on our own now. Plus, you kind of destroyed one of our islands, and we had to relocate, and now there's a ton of radiation. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I'll hold on to the other guys like Guam, Samoa, and the Marianas, but yeah, yeah, you guys did kind of take one for the team. 
more than just one for the team. Okay, 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 fine, 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 fine. You're on your own. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. I know things got a little messy, but you kind of already built a ton of bases and structures. You do have access to resources and global communications. I mean, maybe we can still a lot kind of, money, of operate as the one, but with distinct sovereign status. Oh, Marshy, it's like you've been reading my diary. And today, citizens of both countries are able to move and live and work in each other's countries with open status. The Marshall Islands get subsidies, like business deals, access to the U.S. FCC, Postal Service, and Defense, while the U.S. gets to operate formerly built bases as if nothing changed from World War II times. And the same goes for Palau and the Federated States of Micronesia. We'll get into that in another episode, though. Stay tuned. But yeah, the people of the Bikini Atoll were effectively relocated to Keeley Island after Castle Bravo, the largest atmospheric nuclear test that was ever conducted by the USA. <laughs> That's cute. If you look close from satellite images, you can actually see the craters caused by the bombs on these atolls. The Inewatak Atoll still remains inhabited, though, as the U.S. built a radioactive containment dome known as the Cactus Dome. It's really not recommended to visit this place because of all the Run radiation, it. but some people actually do, like this crazy Kiwi guy. Anyway, if you visit some places of, of interest, you might want to consider later. checking out. Might include places like the College of the Marshall Islands, International Convention <laughs> no, Center, didn't. Marshall <laughs> Islands <laughs> Visitors Authority, the Adele Museum and Public Library, any of the various Did you say churches. <laughs> small quaint town of Jobor on the Jaluit Atoll, the coconut fields of Woche, and tourism for the Bikini Atoll closed in 2008. However, some nuclear tourism enthusiasts are allowed to nuclear go special tourism. arrangements. Yeah, nuclear tourism. That's a thing. Just wait for the Ukraine episode. Anyway, moving on. I wish I could just like uh, watch. Uh, has anybody? I know that we definitely a lot of us uh, searched up on YouTube before nuclear explosions. We just watched a bunch of nuclear explosions because they're just so freaking awe-inspiring uh, in, in, in a strange way in a very eerie way they're like super awe-inspiring like humans created such a powerful weapon like a nuclear explosion and they're, they're like ginormous towers if you look like if you look at the like the uh, ships next to a, a, a nuclear explosion they're like so freaking tiny and uh, humans somehow invented that uh, that that just blows my mind <laughs> get it because nukes blow my mind yeah and um yeah I don't know, I, that was just a random tangent for me. Islands, the primary measure of wealth is found in land ownership. And with such limited space, you can imagine how much honor is at stake. First of all, the country is divided into two main island chains, the eastern Ratak, or Sunrise Islands, and the western Ralik, or Sunset Islands. Each of these are composed of coral limestone, a porous rock with little fertility. Although the total land area only encompasses... Uh, sometimes uh, those coral rocks that we saw, uh, limestone coral rocks, uh, actually creates uh large islands in, in uh, on their own yeah, just by those uh, these coral rocks that you see here yeah they're coral limestone they can they can clump together and actually form large structures uh, the, many people think they're they're new islands and ma as a matter of fact um map makers back in the day actually recorded islands as they were you know traveling along they were actually drawing their maps and they drew, drew islands that are not actually there we only find find out many many years later actually recently there was one island that we thought existed but it doesn't exist many people thought what the hell were, were those uh, map makers high potentially but more more likely that the coral lime those were what they saw were actually just coral limestone conglomerates and uh, of course eventually the coral limestone is going to sink it's going to disperse and the island is no more so technically they were right there was something back then not anymore the coral limestone has gone away fertility. Although the total land area only encompasses about 70 square miles of land mass, 181 square kilometers, they claim about 750,000 square miles of ocean territory in their exclusive economic zone. Wow. Likiep Atoll has That's the a lot of point oil. at only about 10 meters. There are no rivers and only a few Maybe ponds not. and lakes. <laughs> the largest ones being not at small all, ponds on Lib and Mejit Islands. The country has no national animal, but the Maria is a national flower. Otherwise, they have about 70 species of birds, 300 species of fish, hundreds of invertebrates oh, like the coconut crabs and house squirrels. Nope. about four Goodbye. species Goodbye. of sea turtles and only one endemic land mammal, the Polynesian rat. Whew. Okay, once again, Noah is not here to do the physical geography co-host segment because he's traveling. So, uh, uh, Keith, I don't know, would you like to take on this segment? Um, sure. I'm normally like a one-liner type of guy and, you know, puns and stuff, but... Uh, hmm. No. Hey, just try it. Yeah! Most people depend on rainwater collection for fresh water to drink and grow crops with. In 2013, a state of emergency was declared as a drought was happening and the government distributed solar water purifiers and pumps to outlying communities for assistance. I got it! 
Yeah, keep going. Now, economically speaking, the Marshall Islands is no shocker quite a small market. 60% of their yearly budget comes from direct US aid. This means for production, they use every last square inch of land to grow crops. Otherwise, fish is where most of the protein comes from, which is why the atoll structure is so important as the ring shape keeps certain species confined and corralled while shock absorbing turbulent outside waves. This is why fishing on isolated islands like Kili are a bit more difficult. Otherwise, some popular dishes might include Quanjin Jajmi, baked papaya and coconut milk, and Taitui fried banana pancakes. What? And who better to cook those dishes than the people of the Marshall Islands? Let's meet them now, shall we? Man, Keith, you were so high. <laughs> Dude, thank you, Keith. That was amazing. Follow him on Instagram. Whenever we cover island nations, it's very interesting to see how the people of these states learned how to adapt and survive on what are some of the most remote places on the planet. First of all, the country is made up of about 54,000 people and about half live in Madrid. Good. Out of the population, the vast majority at around 92% identify as ethnic The less the merrier. <laughs> Otherwise, about 6% are mixed Marshallese with other nationalities, and the remaining population are mostly Americans with a few Asians, like Filipinos, Chinese, and Japanese. They use the American dollar as their currency, they use the types A, B, American style plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. That plug outlet seems very shy. They, they did, however, Get become the first country <laughs> in the world to issue their own national cryptocurrency as legal tender known as the Sovereign passed in 2000. Don't uh, invest in cryptocurrency. I mean, just, just don't. 18 known as the Sovereign Currency Act. The country has two official languages, Marshallese and English. Both are spoken by nearly everyone, even in remote atolls. Now, as for being Marshallese, what does it mean? Well, first of all, the Marshallese are a subgroup of the broader Micronesian people group. This includes Palau and the Federated States of Micronesia, their closest... I don't know if uh, many people uh, are watching the or are playing the new game that's come out, The Man of Madan. I think it has, like, uh, it's from, like, French Poly Polynesia, I think. It's happening in French Polynesia, but basically around this uh, this general area. So who knows? Maybe the Man of Madan can increase uh, uh, tourism in the area. Relatives. Good game. Check Traditionally, it out. the Marshallese are a matrilineal society, which land is passed down from the mother's side. Populace was divided into clans or buij. There are three subgroups: the commoners or kajur, the lower chiefs or the iruj rik, and the high chiefs, the iruj lap lap. Today, the social structure still kind of lives on, but the dependence on the U.S. has kind of dwindled the traditional role of chiefs, as they are now just kind of seen as like community. Yes, uh, there are some matrimonial. There are there are quite a bit of matrimonial uh, cultures out there, especially like the Iroquois for example. What I've noticed um, when it comes to matrimonial societies and patrimonial societies, as we know, or patriarchal societies, uh, those that went to war a lot, especially around in Europe and like Asia, were usually patriarchal societies because when it comes to warfare, uh, the men have to take care of it, let's be honest. Especially back in, back in the days. But places where it was uh, somewhat peaceful or there was like barely any warfare going on because like who are you gonna who are you gonna go to war with over islands and or or in the middle of nowhere usually they end up being like matriarchal societies they're a lot more peaceful and usually the women are better when it comes to peace and uh aesthetics and whatnot but uh, when it comes to warfare and uh creating weapons of mass destruction absolutely men <laughs> that's why we you know europeans asians and uh I guess you can say Arabian societies were mostly patriarchal. You know, figureheads. Historically, just as we studied in the Madagascar episode, the Marshallese come from the <coughs> Austronesians, descended from thousands of years ago, migrated from Southeast Asia. They were known for being expert sailors and navigators. They used a unique system of stick charts made from sticks and coconut fronds. The shells were representative of islands and they measured wave crests. These were actually used all the way up to World War II when the electronic navigation technology was introduced. Otherwise, some other traditional items and customs might include things like woven rito fans, kem kem, or the festivals and feasts, taking a boat trip to visit friends and family is called jambo, which also means high in Swahili. Jockey mats woven from pandan jumbo. sleeves. And of course, there are traditional dances for both women and men, like the warrior stick dance. Most Marshallese identify as Christians, mostly Protestant, about half belonging to the United Church of Christ. Speaking of which, history time. Austronesians come in maybe about 4,000 years ago. Chiefdoms and traditional societies. This guy comes in in 1526. He calls it Los Pentados. This Russian dude of German descent crosses the world and stops by. The Germans and Brits set up trading 
trading posts. Tension starts with the Spanish. Germany just kind of buys the islands. World War One, Japan comes in and takes over and just kind of plants a base. World War II, the Americans push out the Japanese. UN Security Council concludes that the country should fall under the U.S. administration. For 18 years, 67 bomb tests were launched. The residents of Bikini Atoll were evacuated. 1979, independence. 1986, compact association sarcastic. agreement. 1999, Kisai Note becomes the first commoner to overthrow the chief president tradition. And here we are today. Some people of Marshallese descent or born in the Marshall Islands might include people like Todd Light, Lisa Loring, Roman William Kress, Judah Lang Zedkaya, Anne-Marie Heffler, and Wes Knott. All right, time to move on. Who do these Marshallese Wes people Wes Knott. Here we go. Is he east then? Because he's not west? As a small nation, you would think the Marshall no, Islands would have trouble with outreach, but the complete opposite seems to be true. For one, India has been recently reaching out a lot what? as former president what is it with Modi India? initiated the India Pacific Islands Cooperation well, Forum in 2014. Country, blah, blah, blah. Since then, high level visits have taken place and trade started opening up. The Marshall Islands is also one of the few countries that recognizes Taiwan as a nation. And in 2005, former president Chen Shui bian became the first foreign head of state to make an official visit to the Marshall Islands. When it comes to their family, they are part of the Micronesian triplet along with Palau and Federated States of Micronesia. These three are the closest culturally, their languages are pretty intelligible, and they are all able to travel to each other's countries <laughs> They're all just a chunk of water. <laughs> indefinitely without visas. When it comes to their best friends, however, most likely it would be the USA. After signing the Compact Free Association Agreement, things changed quite a bit. Through the US, relations and global outreach and business soared. A huge chunk of the economy is dependent on the US, and citizens of both countries could now freely move and live in each other's countries with no hassle. Springdale, Arkansas, has the largest community of Marshallese people outside of the Marshall Islands with about 5,000 people. In conclusion, Godzilla and SpongeBob radiation jokes aside, <laughs> the Marshall Islands is like the quietest little ocean nation that has seen the craziest things ever happen in the past few centuries. Still, they just move on one canoe paddle at a time. Stay tuned, Mauritania is coming up next. Cool, another Berber state, kind of. Arabic hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you like the Marshall Islands episode. This is my new office. It's awesome, right? It's uh, it's still in the works. Uh, I need to get two doors. This, these don't even have doors yet. Oh, also, you have an echo. Because you guys suggested it for the school year, we now have kid-sized Geography Now t-shirts. For one, I accidentally said former president Narendra Modi of India. He's not he former. He's actually the current prime minister. I don't know why. <laughs> I think maybe I meant to say former president Kesai Note was an ambassador to India, but it got messed and up. Whatever. I have no idea why it was a mistake. Second of all, I got the wrong picture of Anne-Marie Hepler. And uh, funny story, she actually saw the video and contacted me. And uh, she sent me the correct picture, which is this. Third of all, I got the wrong picture of John Marshall. This is actually American Supreme Court Justice John Marshall from a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I was about to say. Picture, but this is not him, so yeah. Uh, a few things Doesn't look like a sailor. I really need to talk too much about how the former presidents of the Marshall Islands almost always used to be chiefs, but then Kesai Note was the first commoner, and he kind of broke that tradition. Also, one controversy is that the U.S. did kind of compensate the people who left the Bikini Atoll, but the payments haven't been completed yet, and it's been going on ever since the bombing. Uh, That's what I was thinking. There's of course a few other things I could have mentioned, but we don't really have too much time. If, if They'll you know pay you off. Uh, write in the comments. In the meantime, and weapons. Get the flag done. They'll so send you weapons. Hey, I wouldn't mind the, the United States uh, sending uh, some weapons. Islands, good to be back in Oceania. Let's just jump into the flag. The flag is a blue banner like with literally two rising diagonal it. bands extending from the lower left to the upper right. The flag kind of symbolizes the location of the country in the ocean. The two bands symbolizing the equator as well as the Ratak and Radik island chains. They also symbolize peace and courage. The star above stands for the northern hemisphere as well that as the 24 sense. points of the star similar to Brazil. The four electoral districts of the country with the four elongated points representing the cultural center Majuro, Jaluit, Boche, and Ebeye. Keep in mind, of course, prior to this, they were under the U.S. jurisdiction, so they were kind of under the former U.S. flags. Prior to all that, they were under the American Trust Territory of the Pacific Island. And prior to all that, from 1879 to 1894, they were That's like a negative, under the German New Guinea negative uh, Thailand flag. Stuff. The Japanese came in, and of course, they were kind of technically under the Japanese Imperial flag. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, coat of arms, which is not a coat of arms, it's a seal. The image depicts 
It's an angel with outstretched wings with the same diagonal bands and star pattern found on the flag above it. Above the wings are a giant clam and a fishing net. To the bottom left, an atoll with palm trees. To the bottom right, an outrigger canoe. On the bottom is a traditional nautical chart, all surrounded by a ring of chains. And at the bottom, the motto, Chepilpilin Ke Ejukan, meaning accomplishment through joint effort. And that is pretty much the only seal that they've had. Uh, nothing prior to that, so pretty simple. And so, okay. yeah, we're done. You know what that means? We're done. Yeah, you, you just mentioned it. We're done here. So until then, take care.